discuss the different solutions, but also that if, if you haven't heard of Zen, there's a lot of stuff going on because Drupal is gaining so much popularity in the PHP world that now we're seeing professional products help us optimize and develop better Drupal sites so when they launch, there's no extra surprises. And I'm sure that's going to be covered tonight. So if we could please give a very warm welcome to Start From Zen. Hello, everyone. And we are recording tonight's session, so please okay, enjoy great. tonight. Thank I'll you. try and do it OK. But uh, my name is Siddharth Agarwal, and I run Americas and Emerging Markets for Zen. And Chris reached out to us, our, I think, yesterday or today. And I happened to be in the Irvine area. So Anne helped drive me up here. And she said, it's going to take us three hours to get here from Irvine to uh, Santa Monica. And we got here in an hour. So <laughs> hey, this was maybe destined to be, because otherwise we weren't going to be here. So first of all, before I get started, uh, how many of you know who Zend is? OK, so there are, quite, uh, there are a few people, and I'll talk about that. Um, how many of you know what Zen Framework is? Okay. Uh, and how many of you are experiencing maybe performance challenges on Drupal, on your Drupal-based sites? Okay, there's there, there three people out there. Okay, good. So let me just start off with a high level of Zen. Um, uh, Terry, I think, mentioned Rasmus Lerdoff. He was the one who started writing PHP. And our co-founders, Andy and Zev, are the co-authors of PHP 3. That's the first version of commercial PHP, and that's what's evolved. So Andy, uh, Zend is actually the ZE from Zev and the ND from Andy. So Zend is the commercial company behind PHP, like what Red Hat is to Linux, uh, Zend is to PHP. And we've got a commercial set of software, but more importantly, we've got Zen Framework, which is an open source framework, which is used in applications like Magento to develop applications. And um, you know, we've got offices around the globe. We've got 30,000 customers. And uh, we, we have application servers for uh, PHP uh, applications. We've got an IDE for helping build PHP applications and uh, you know, the support, etc. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, a benchmark that we had done on how you can improve the performance of Drupal-based applications using Zen and memory-based caching, etc. So I'll do, do that in the context of going over sort of what the Zen solutions are. And I'll bring up the benchmark. Uh, but uh, I think... Uh, Chris had mentioned that you guys are going to put the URLs up for the white paper on the benchmark, which was done jointly with Akuya and Reese actually worked on it. Um, we're going to uh, provide a white paper on data caching, and there's a recorded webinar that you can watch, which actually walks you through how to optimize your Drupal-based uh, application. Yeah? So just to get started a little bit, um, and one of the things, by the way, is that uh, you know, for all of you guys here, maybe people who are part of this group, we are announcing a raffle for a studio giveaway. So Studio Zen Studio is the IDE in which you can develop applications. So um, I think Chris is going to create some kind of a form. I don't know to, but uh, Chris is going to create some kind of form for you where you guys can enter in your information and register for that raffle, and we'll announce it in the next week. And please feel free to interrupt me, ask questions. Um, so as I was mentioning, you know, our key areas of focus are, you know, how do you provide an enterprise-grade PHP stack? So, you know, vulnerabilities get announced around PHP. How do you make sure that those vulnerabilities, you know, patches issued to that? Uh, how do you do monitoring in production? So you have, you're writing a Drupal-based application. Drupal, there's code that's already written, and you're customizing the code on top. Now, when a problem happens, how do you know what happened or where it happened within the Drupal code, which is pretty large? And then, uh, you know, for managing your servers on which Drupal is running. You might have four servers, five servers, ten servers. I mean, Sony Music, for example, is one of the largest commercial deployments of Drupal, and they have 20 servers in the data center and 20 servers in the cloud. And the biggest challenges they have is when Michael Jackson dies, their michaeljackson.com site comes down. Or when, you know, I think it was Christina Aguilera or someone went to jail, that site went down. Or someone goes on one of the, you know, uh, shows that they have on abc.com, like, uh, uh, you know, Dancing with the Stars, that site goes down. So they're very focused on how to, you know, optimize Drupal and manage those large sets of servers. Um, and then, you know, we'll talk a lot about uh, optimal application performance, how do you optimize Drupal, and ability to scale as the load increases. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, how to make everyone more productive. So, uh, <clears throat> this is sort of what is included in the application server. 
Um, so you've got uh, the ability to do acceleration. Some of you have probably heard of APC or WinCash. Um, this is the acceleration that you know in the benchmark it shows it is much better than that. Um, caching, so full page caching or data based caching, so that you can optimize you know the requests that are coming in. And then job queuing, which is the ability to offload processing. Uh, so, for example, um, uh, one of our customers is in ticketing, and they put it, sell the tickets for Burning Man. And uh, you know, when they get these, either put up the site or for Madonna concert, they get 200,000 tickets that are purchased within an hour. And they need to offload those ticket purchases to another server because. Um, the, uh, the, the transaction of buying uh, the ticket and going to the credit card company takes way too long. And so their servers or web servers are holding on to that. So they offload that and then return back to the user immediately. The web servers are not spending at that much time. Um, and then monitoring, you know, when your site is running, how do you know what happened, what went wrong? Today, you know, the production ops guys immediately call you saying there's something wrong, your code is not working. How do you know what went wrong? Um, and we talked a little bit about tracing and session clustering and then uh, managing the servers um, and then the updates and hot fixes that we provide. So, um, you know, from an architecture perspective, your servers uh, at the endpoints are running, um, you know, IAS or Apache, whatever but your web servers might be, and Drupal is running there. Uh, Zenserver runs at the endpoints and there's a central sort of uh, manager that manages all those servers so you can, you know, if one server crashes, it automatically moves the session to another server in the environment. So, um, uh, from a performance uh, perspective, you know, there's opcode caching. I think you all know what opcode caching might be, which is, you know, once your PHP code is run, it gets compiled once, and then you don't need to, you know, do it over and over again. Uh, page caching, so you can actually cache entire pages, uh, PHP pages, so that if there is no, if there is, if it's more static content, like your home pages, you know, there is not that much that's happening on the home page that's customized to the user, you can cache that entire HTTP response in memory. And then data caching, uh, this is with APIs that you can call to cache the data in memory, so instead of going to disk, you're actually caching data for dynamic content. So here's uh, the, um, <coughs> benchmark that was done. Uh, I think uh, this is it. So what we did was, and we worked with Acquia on this, and so Dries was also working on it, where we looked at a benchmark of PHP by itself. That's the PHP 5 to 10 without any, you know, acceleration. And we compared that to APC. You know, what kind of acceleration we get with APC. Then we compared it to Zen Server, which is the application server from Zen, and looked at the performance for uh, Zen Server. Then we took APC and added some shared memory access to it so that uh, there's shared memory caching going on. And then we did Zen Server plus the shared memory access. And then we did Zen Server plus disk based uh, caching. And then we did the full page caching. And the numbers that you see are the number of requests per second. So um, you're seeing that the, the higher the number of requests per second, the better is the performance. And uh, we also looked at the uh, press flow. And when we did some uh, press flow mod, uh, we made uh, Drupal 36% faster than the standard build. But then when you put Zen server page caching in, it was 27 times faster. So you'd need those many fewer servers. So this is part of a presentation that was done uh, in, in conjunction with uh, um, Acquia and Drupal, which goes into how do you do page caching, how do you do shared memory caching. Uh, there's a white paper on data caching that you can access. And uh, this is on the zen.com website and the recorded webinar. But I'm sure Bill put up the link for that. So, um, <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, how many of you have uh, uh, deployments that have more than one server? Okay, so a few few organizations have more than one server. So here, you know, when someone makes a change to one server, sometimes they forget to make changes to the other servers. So how do you make sure that you can manage the entire cluster as one server? Where if you make a change to one server, it automatically replicates those changes to other servers. Or if a configuration changes on one server, you get alerted to the uh, changes on the other server. Um, and then, you know, we talked about job queue, about being able to execute the scripts offline for uh, uh, job queuing purposes, so you're not keeping your web servers busy. 
And then, uh, you know, application monitoring. Uh, today, when something goes wrong, most of the times, you know, your customer is calling in, or you know, your artist is calling in and saying, "Hey, you know, I went to the site and it wasn't working." So, what we've done is, since we're running the the PHP engine is created by us, we actually know exactly what's happening at any given point in time, and we're able to instrument that and give you alerts of what is happening around slow running queries, slow running scripts, etc or failing functions, failing database queries. And so when an issue is detected, the event is reported, and you can now drill down into the event and see exactly where in your code the problem was happening. Or you can take that problem from the production side of the house and move it into your IDE and step through the code. So one of the things that we did just recently was introduce the notion of code tracing. So just like in an airplane, uh, there's a black box recorder, and when the airplane crashes, it has recorded everything up to the point of the crash. And obviously, you don't want to try and reproduce that crash. You know, you don't want to try and make the plane crash again. That wouldn't be a good thing. So what we did was created that same capability for PHP-based code. So for Drupal, you know, applications. Um, so if you, for example, you know, come across a problem, we by then recorded every method that you went into, every variable values that were there. And so rather than looking at log files and trying to figure out what the problem was, you can actually take this code trace, move it into your IDE, and step through your code without needing to reproduce the problem and see exactly where the problem happened. You can ask questions like, show me the longest running uh, 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 path in my code, which means what took the most time. Or you can say, show me the most memory intensive part path through the code, right? And it's like the user is sitting on your shoulders because every variable, value, etc., has been entered. The session variable, the get variable, the post variables, everything has been tracked. And it only writes this when the problem happens. So from a performance perspective in production, you can actually run this in production because there is no overhead. Because we're going through and processing all the code anyway. So we're keeping track of that information and we throw it away if there is no problem. If there's a problem, then we write it out to disk and then we're able to move the code trace over. Um, session clustering is really interesting. So let's say you have two servers, and the um, end user comes in, they log in, they have a shopping cart, and uh, you know something happens to one of the servers, and they were being served by that server. Now, if you didn't do anything, that shopping cart would be you know gone, and the user would have to go through that process again. Obviously, something not something that you don't want. So what we've done with session clustering is that if the user comes back to that server and the server is dead, we'll automatically have a copy of that session somewhere else. So for them, they don't even experience that the shopping cart died or the server died or the shopping cart needs to be recreated. Now one of the things is all these things do not need a single line of code chain in your application. All this happens under the covers and you get that visibility without needing to make any code changes other than when you're using that shared memory data API which gives you a lot of performance benefits. Um, and then centralized management, I think we talked about it. A lot of applications are going into the cloud. So how do you easily scale up and scale down uh, you know, your servers? Because you want to be able to bring up servers when you have uh, uh, peaks and spikes in your application. And then also, you know, if a configuration changes on a server, you should be able to get an alert that something went wrong, and you can actually have that configuration set back to where it should have been. Um, and then, you know, we, we ship out the hot fixes. So Zen Framework is released by us. So all the Zen Framework releases come through Zen Server. Um, there are two versions of Zen Server. There's a free version, which is a community edition, which gives you some of the performance benefits. It gives you these patches and updates. And then there's a commercial paid for version of Zen Server, which gives you the monitoring, the code tracing, the session clustering, and other capabilities. So for those of you who just want to try it out and see how you know your environment can just be faster and you have some value, you can just download Zen Server CE, uh, which is a community edition, or you get a fully uh, uh, functioning trial license of Zen Server also. So you can download it from zen.com. Um, and uh, you know all this uh, installation are native installs. So for example, on Linux it is RPM based install, on Windows it is MSI based installs. Um, we also support the Mac OS, especially for developers. So if you're developing on the Mac, there is a Zen server that you can use there. I think that was uh, uh, pretty much, oh, and the other thing is, you know, as extensions get updated, you want to make sure that all your developers are using the same versions of extensions so you know what is changing out there. 
So rather than you having to track what extensions are changing, we track them and we let you know through Zen Server what are the extensions that have changed. And you can decide which ones of those that you want to get into your uh, environment. Okay? And you have a web-based console for managing and looking at all this stuff. Um, so that's pretty much the uh, presentation. Here's the white paper. So um, this is the white paper that we co-wrote that goes into you know all the you know how the analysis was done and what kinds of uh, uh, changes were made to Drupal and what was looked at. And this white paper is available for free, so you can download that from uh, Zen.com. And then the webinar presentation and the data caching white paper. Any questions on uh, you know Zen or you know I've gone through it really fast, but yes, Terry. Yeah, I just have one question. Uh, now, which monitoring uh, can those be used in any way to help manage uh, when you're when you let's say you have a, a couple of uh, hard servers uh, and you're managing cloud instances, spinning mm -hmm. up uh, these instances? Mm -hmm. Can you use that information to help manage that or automate that? Absolutely. So, then uh, server is actually a module that is running inside Apache or IIS. It's not like a separate application server, it's not a separate box or anything like that. It's just an extension, just like all the other extensions that is running in the web here. So when you spin up an instance with an EC2, you can have it actually be a Zen server instance with all your code pre-configured, right? And with the Zen server cluster manager, you can say turn on three more instances. So you can see inside the application either in development, right? You've written your customizations and then there's a Drupal code underneath, or in production. Is there, are there any tools to, to help automate that? So to automate the provisioning? Yeah, so if, so if you know, you, you, you're all of a sudden hitting past the, uh, right. in the middle of the night, you know, right. so you can mm -hmm. spin up uh, another uh, another instance. Sure, we work with a company called RightScale and we're okay. working with Microsoft and IBM mm -hmm. and others so that we can, you know, scale out the, you know, you based on the utilization, you can say, okay, now spin up more instances with an EC2. I got one other question. Sure. Um, how do you, you guys, does your product work well with Varnish? Does it care about Varnish? Does it uh, not like Varnish? So, so uh, if I understand it, Varnish and Squid are proxy caching mechanism? Yeah, Varnish is a little bit different. Yeah. Okay, so it's a caching mechanism. And in fact, that was analyzed in here uh, because the cache that we provide is at the level of the session and the cookie. So you can actually say, hey, if this user law, if this user comes in and they've never had a session created or a cookie created, then cache the stuff because maybe nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. But once they log in, they don't cache the stuff. So, but yes, it would work with like you know, if APC it works with APC, it works with memcache, so it works with different cache. Yeah, Varnish by Squid is page cache. It's not really you know. Right. So this is where you can take page caching or to cache the entire page, or you can say, okay, three quarters of the page is the same, but this one piece keeps on changing, so I'll keep the three quarters of the page the same, and I'll just, you know, uh, dynamically update this one uh, uh, part of it. And New York Stock Exchange is doing a lot with Drupal, actually. They took a two and a half year old project in Java, and they canned it in September, and in three months with Drupal, they recreated that project and launched NYC Connect and uh, uh, what was the other one, Ed? Um, uh, money sense, money .com. It was all in Drupal, and that was one of the things that they were doing was spinning up instances into memory, and they're using Zen to make sure that they can provide the right performance and have the right uh, 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 visibility into the application. Any other Any questions? questions? We have one more over there. Yeah. Do you, know? you cache stuff? Do you cache it on memory, or do you store it on disk? So you, it is your choice, but obviously you want to share as much uh, or cache as much in memory as possible, right? Because the access is much faster and you don't have to go down to disk. So a lot of times the caching mechanisms that are out there are disk-based or database-based, right? Which means a full round trip back. And so a lot of the caching that we do is actually at the memory layer so that, you know, even for example, the session clustering that I talked about, we actually have a copy of the session cached in one random server in that cluster. So it's very easy to just redirect and go to that server and pull that data from memory. It's much faster to do memory-based caching. And you can see that in the performance benchmark chart that I put out here.
So you, you know, you see, as you're adding, this is all the shared memory stuff on here, right? As you're adding uh, uh, more shared memory, more, putting more things into shared memory, the performance is better. And then when you go to, you know, doing the whole page cache, then it gets even better out there. Any final questions? No? So thank you very much. and. Uh,